Guys, it's part three of Daily 660. That might be daily number 666, given how much technological problems there is. I think it is the issue that the game heart uh, system that's being used to spectate these games, which by the way is amazing, um, is, is just causing some serious choking on the PC. I think my PC can't handle it. We're gonna get through this. If you're watching on the archives, I'm sorry for the mess. If you're my editor, I'm fucking really sorry for the mess. <laughs> so, what we didn't get to see uh, in part two is just more ideas on the variations of this opening. The the notion of we're opening using ling speed and roaches to uh, we're getting them quickly, not just to hold off attacks against us, but to deal damage to him, and then we do some responses and some setup. Let's see a rather different game here. Between life and patience. This is quite different from everything that we've seen thus far. It's just concepts that we're seeing out of life. And he's very judicious about the, uh, the second attack. The, the first round of units is just a little poke and prod forth force, and then there's a softening force in that second round, and life is just brutal with it in this game. So, uh, let's, let's see here. Yeah, there it is. Four minutes. I'm getting his third base. You guys learning and shit. It's kind of hard to take it seriously after this much stuff has gone wrong. But, you know, well, I mean, it's not take it seriously. It's hard not to let out the frustration. <laughs> so this guy's making a zealot like an idiot. What a fool. The zealot doesn't even know where he's going. Okay, that's pretty good, but still, what a dummy, right? Okay, the gas is a little bit later. <gasps> is Day9 wrong? I'm fucking never wrong. He builds lings this time instead of a roaches. Also, it's easier to spot on this map, you dummy. Look at all those lings. Look at all those lings. Here, here's the pokey force. Aww, oh, it's the pokey force. Here it comes. Pokey force, moving on in to try to do some pokey damage. Checking for a third. Checking for a third, he sees a little probe and begins to shoot that little bird. Here it comes. <gasps> Gelato gets smacked, Zealot. Oh, quickly to the rocks. Oh, I squished myself. What an idiot. I called it from the get go. Okay, look, Oracle's coming up. Ain't no fang. This is where an ordinary Zerg would say, Oh, it is an oracle. I even see it with my own eyes. He saw it, alright? Listen to me. I'm never wrong. Normally this is where a Zerg would be like, Oh, I'm going to get a really fast layer. And spores to stay alive, but the really fast layer, because he can't hit me from the ground. Not life. Hell no. <laughs> He's gonna drone up a little bit, but not too much at all. First settlings indicated that a fast third was something that would be spotted. Notice how he has spotted the placing of a third. He's killed off a lot of probes, man, and by a lot of probes, I mean... Can you not bring up the number of workers killed? Okay, time to walk into a sliding glass door on purpose. Here comes the roaches and lings. Most Protoss defenses are based around defending speed roach attacks. What they are not good at defending is speed ling slow roach attacks. So the way that life does it is he builds a big round of roaches, 15 to be precise, and then he's building only lings, baby. Here it comes, it's only ling o'clock. Now, there is a Void Ray here. I want you to even envision if there were multiple Void Rays. That's right. Envision two, three, four. I don't give a damn. Use your imagination. Doesn't matter. Only Lings are being flooded, so they manage to burst into the enemy. And here's the intuitive follow-up. 
A fourth can also go down. A fourth can go down there like you just don't care. Wouldn't Burrow be good here, but life forgot it. What an embarrassment to the StarCraft community. Not getting Burrow. I don't want to see him win. I want to see him very, very win here. But that's fine. He will. Alright, do you get it? You probably get it. Now, in my pain... We're going to watch one last game. We're going to get through this. We're going to take some questions. And then, you know what? I've decided I deserve ramen. That's what I've decided. I'm going to get some ramen. Look, patience dies. Look, look at, look at the attacking. Isn't that sweet? Yeah, get him life. Invade. Invade with an invasion. Kill, kill. There's the same play. Okay, you get it. Whew, shit, we gotta close this replay. This is gonna crash the stream, isn't it? Okay. Three. Two. One. Did it work? Did it, did, it, did it work? Do we have sound? Oh my god, do we have sound? I don't know, I have to wait 30 to 90 seconds. That's right, technology, get shit on. Mm. Boom. Take it. Take it, technology. More like technology, G, he said preemptively. Ugh. Let's watch Naniwa lose. How does that sound to you? Mm. Titillating, especially if you're a Zerg player who's been trying to learn in this daily. Ugh. All right, let's go into this game. Oh, wow. Uh, when did that happen? Playoff winners bracket round one. Life Naniwa. Mm. And let me tell you something. Naniwa, his plays are savory. Because we're about to see him do some cheese. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Here it comes. I'm going to hit my little two button. What do you know? It's a game hot in the face. What do you know? There it is. The game starts. Absolutely beautiful game heart. Absolutely love it. My computer sucks and does not want to deal with it. Once upon a, once upon a time, there was a man named Naniwa. The most powerful Protoss in the North. Let's see how he does. Let's see how it'll go, Joe. Well, he's building a spawning pool. Naniwa, he's going Nexus Gate. Why all the hate? He's gonna go for a two base. And what does Star Tail Life do? He takes a third. Do you understand what I'm saying? Alright, we gotta go to the life cam, which I think I achieved by hitting Control 1. And the money's covered up, but that's okay. Because we don't care about anything at all anymore. Some wings show up. Ain't no thing. Oh, wait, we can't do that because I need to be able to show the production tab. Which doesn't show up if you go into first player point of view. No! No! Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Oh, a round of lings. What is that round of lings? Well, it's a first poking force. We've largely seen it done via Zroch. We saw in the last two games, ten lings pop out with the delayed gas in order to apply pressure. <laughs> Counterattack, scout and attack. The roaches that were built, I told you that they poked in order to get more information. Well, here, Zerglings, our early force, is poking to get more information. A couple units are going to need to be creative. And so they are. We have 
and Achari and the latest Roach Warren of all. But we're getting Zergling speed quite early. And then in, uh, I mean, normally the way that players will try to hold off these types of big Immortal Sentry thingies is they will try to be doing it with the Roach speed, getting that done. Life actually just cancels his layer. I actually think he got his layer too quickly and went, you know what, I see the error of my ways. And he's going to do the same thing. Flood with a lot of roaches, replenish with a lot of flames. Normally when people are trying to hold off this attack, they will have three gas, but they will have invested in a layer and the roach speed. Life is just getting a lot of roaches and then spending all the rest on a lot of lings. This is one of the most terrifying attacks out there because it's almost at the Zerg base at 9.30 as opposed to starting to leave the Protoss' base by around then. And it's got a lot of units. Really uh, imposing and terrifying attack. Wow. Such attack. But hitting out in the open and building lots of roaching, lots of lings and homing. It is not enough for none who want to do defending. On immortals he's depending. His Protoss life is ending in our hearts. And this is what's nice is that again, so much of the usual pro or Zerg vs Protoss play is Ah oh, I need more drones! If I don't have drones then I'm gonna cry. But no, we see life just calmly getting a ridiculously late layer. And he's just gonna go Idraliska. That's a Hydralisk, as they would say in the Brood War broadcast. Ah yeah. Now it's most common Oh shit, dancing lings from life. He loves it. He's having fun in the daily, I get it. So life is just doing the smart thing, checking for the third, that's always the smart thing. There is no other such thing as the smart thing other than spotting for the third, literally. Like seriously, when I say he's doing the smart thing, I'm almost always talking about monitoring of thirds. Virtually almost always. So we see the Hydras not getting speed, but getting range because that helps us deal with false fields. Which he's no doubt low on. Um, a lot of these early attacks are just to disrupt force field energy. I mean, even the Ling Roach flood there to be able to kill that all was killing force field energy. So let's go ahead and see it panned out, wrapped up, and wrapped out with a pity pouty pout. Well, I was doing the only reasonable all in follow up to the all in, which is to go Blink Stalker Immortal with no sentries. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, Stalker's coming in. A counterattack, looking intimidating. Does he have Infesta? No. Muta? No. Lingroach? No. Hydra? Mm. That's a little bit closer to the spot. Here it comes. <laughs> Oh, shift Z, oh, oh, rotate GG. We're done. I've decided I'm going to get ramen right now. Thank you for being so patient and sticking through the daily with me. I'll see you tomorrow where I'll be playing Starbound with JP a lot. Mmm.